For many of us, the concept of health is defined as absence of disease. But do you really believe that to be true? As a specialist surgeon and teacher, I have come to the firm belief that true health is a balanced state between the mind, the body and the soul. Under the Knife with Dr. Arun is an attempt to tap into the wisdom of world experts from various fields to learn practical tools that can allow us to change our own destiny. Not just in the field of health and wellness, rather in every facet of a fulfilled life. But it begins with health. Because as Emerson said, health is our first wealth, the value of which is only recognized when it is lost. Join me in welcoming another global expert in this episode as we explore some amazing self-empowering ideas today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Under the Knife, where we meet world experts in the space of health and wellness who are able to empower us with empowering and uh, informative ideas that allow us to live more purposeful and meaningful lives. My guest today is Elise Wagner. Elise and I met on LinkedIn and I really love the work that she was doing and she is continuing to do and I reached out to her and she was kind enough to uh, be my guest on this podcast. Elise is a certified nutritionist and a licensed mental health counselor associated with a dual master's degree both in nutrition and also in psychology. She's also the author of two books, Functional Medicine Coaching and Smoothie Secrets Revealed. More importantly, she's also an entrepreneur. She's a co-founder of the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, and she's also the Chief Wellbeing Officer. I love that title, by the way, Elise. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Uh, and uh, tell us uh, a little bit about where are you and what does the Functional Coaching Academy do? I'm really curious about the role of the Chief Wellbeing Officer. I wish every organization had one, by the way. Well, thank you so much for, first of all, hosting me and having me. I'm really delighted and happy to be here. Um, I'm located in Chicago, Illinois. So um, yeah, and as the Chief Wellbeing Officer at the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, I actually get the honor and um, it's really a privilege to be able to support not just our student body of health coaches and graduates, but I also get to support our um, our internal team. And you know, we really are a school. We're an online school, um, and we practice what we preach. We really live in our values. And um, as the chief well-being officer, I am putting together in collaboration with our team uh daily sometimes daily events weekly events monthly events coordinating just ways that we can really support um, our team members we have team members from all around the globe we used to have a team member in australia right. but from saudi arabia south africa um and so these are God, team members just to clarify time. these are team members yeah. who work for the functional medicine coaching institute Yes, for the Functional Medicine Coaching right. Academy. And you We've develop got, uh, programs for these yeah. people who work for the Institute. Yeah, yeah. We co-create right. programs um, for our team members as a whole, as a company of what FMCA, yes. short for Functional Medicine yes. Coaching Academy, what yes. we do um, primarily is that we train health coaches in right. the modality of functional medicine and positive psychology, mind body tools and techniques, the art and science of coaching. And so um, that is what we do as a school where we train health coaches. But within my role as the chief well being officer for yeah, our God. team members, we really are, you know, providing a, a safe space where people can, um, you know, do what they're doing at work, but also look really collaborate and bring in the well-being piece as well. Yeah. That's very, very us. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, and I think uh, being a being a medical practitioner myself, I totally recognize that sometimes, you know, there is this thing called as a caregiver stress. Uh, 
when you give care to someone else, and I'm not saying that you sort of, you know, emotionally entangle yourself in every case that you see or speak to, but I mean, there is always that exchange. You know, we are human beings at the end of the day. So you got to look after yourself. And as they say, fill your own cup so you can then pour it into someone else's cup. So I totally hear that. And I really wish every organization had someone of this designation of chief well-being officer. Uh, but yeah. tell me, Elise, uh, the uh, for somebody who may be listening to this podcast for mm -hmm. the first time, what is functional medicine and how is it different to conventional medicine? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, and functional medicine is really a philosophy. It is a way of thinking and it is systems based. It's evidence based. It's patient centered or client centered, depending on who you're working with. Hmm. Um, and it's really looking at the whole person and taking a very individualized or personalized approach. It's not a one size fits all approach, but everything that we are training our health coaches on um, is evidence based and has some great research behind it. And so that's really if you think of I like to use a little bit of an analogy, if you think of like a tree, Yes. And you've got the branches of the tree. And that's typically where you might find, quote unquote, conventional or traditional medicine. Mm. You know, you've got your cardiology, pulmonology, nephrology, et cetera. And mm. things are kind of segmented. Correct. In functional medicine, though, we look at the whole, um, but we also go down or or sometimes we call it we go upstream and we get into the roots mm. and so functional medicine is also the medicine of root cause mm. so it's it's the medicine of why and so sometimes traditional uh practitioners might ask you know well what's going on what's wrong with you right mm. functional medicine is really asking that question of well why is this happening because mm. everything is interconnected together so you know why is this really going on now with yeah. functional medicine health coaching we add this additional component where our coaches understand they're certainly not you know acting as doctors they're not prescribing treating diagnosing ordering mm. or interpreting labs that's not their role yes. their role is to have some foundational education and knowledge about that and be able mm -hmm. to explain why this might be happening there but their role is really for the provider or the um doctor if you will to give them a one or two minute directive to the health coaches mm. and for the health coaches to be able to educate support advocate and really put into practice and implement all of the lifestyle behavior change that's necessary for some of these one or two minute directives that are given mm. by the providers. You know, sometimes we're strapped with for time. Oh. And so the health is a wonderful opportunity to really meet someone where they're at because yeah. we're all at different stages of change, right? Some people are really ready to make changes. Some people I are agree. not even thinking about it. No, <laughs> that's, that's true. Okay, you know? Yeah. Um, but the health is there to implement yeah. and really support client and i think mm -hmm. yeah like i often as i've gone through my own journey of being in mainstream medical practice medicine and surgery i think realistically in hospitals we deliver disease care we don't deliver health care you know because we want you i often say we want as doctors we want people to be sick so they can come to us you know if you're healthy what use are you to a pulmonologist or a surgeon you know you're breathing well you fit in high healthy you know so i mean there is something to be said about it and i think this is what i observe in my own practice that people are getting awakened they want answers and as you said you know start with the why i love that because you got to go to the root there is a reason and you know as they say there is a law of cause and effect for every effect that you see, there is a cause. It's not just a bug that has caused an infection. I think there is much, much deeper than that. Uh, but at least my question, uh, the next question that comes to mind is that, you know, I also see that there is a lot of resistance and I think it is coming mostly from fear-based thinking in the mainstream medical practitioners who tend to criticize and say, oh, this is all new agey stuff. It's all 
crystals and uh, all of that. You know, there's no evidence behind it. Uh, how how do you educate an innocent patient who is confused in this jargon of functional medicine, integrative medicine, mainstream medicine, and they've been shown so like, I often say these days you can prove or disprove the same thing by a study that has been done somewhere in the planet, you know. So mm -hmm. it, it's very confusing for innocent lay people, I say. So how how do you bridge that gap? Because in some ways I feel mainstream medicine and health coaching are operating in silos. You know, uh, there is a gap that we need to bridge. I don't know how the state is in, in America at this point in time, but I just see this as a concern with mainstream mm -hmm. practitioners. Yeah, that, well, you're totally right. And I think that that's a beautiful way to say it. That's how I explain it as well as health coaches are really there to bridge that gap from mm. where you as a client or as a patient might be to where you want to go. Now, let's just say, for example, you're a client and you're working with a provider practitioner who's given you X, Y, or Z, LMNOP, you know, all the different things to do. Mm. That can be really overwhelming. And yeah, if you're listening absolutely. You know, and you're struggling with this, I mean, I've been on that side of the, the um, We'll just say <laughs> practitioner practitioner's uh, chair or, or whatever you want to call it. I've been mm. in that space where I've had, you know, getting diagnosed with an autoimmune disease myself, right. celiac, while right. I'm in grad school learning about holistic nutrition and psychology, you know, and I, wow. this is where this um, really so came So you got diagnosed me. while you were in your grad school? Yes. So yeah. you had no symptoms, nothing prior to that? Oh, you no, I had some time. It was just oh, totally from people. Right. Yeah, it went, people were misdiagnosing me. I just, I probably saw 10 or multiple providers and practitioners. Right. And right. my parents were actually going to pull me out of school, wow. out of grad school from Seattle, Washington. Yes. Take me to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Mm. And I said, no, I, I totally have a, a belief. Yes. Which, from my values that my body is super powerful and it is screaming out loud saying you know whatever the symptoms i was having from you know gas and bloating to mm. uh, foggy head everything you know mm. you name it right my body was talking to me and mm. i was trying to listen and i was trying to get to the root of what was going on we weren't getting there necessarily fast enough right mm. But why I would love for people to really understand and, and embrace functional medicine as an opportunity to to learn a little bit more. I'm not saying that traditional or conventional medicine is bad by any means. We absolutely need it. We all we need mm. all of it. Quite yeah, frankly. I mean, we there's enough. <laughs> unfortunately, there's enough uh, unwell, you know, and diseased people on this planet mm. where I think we all can, you know, use some support and some help. Um, so anyways, long story short is I did find a functional medicine provider after seeing right. about 10 different providers who was able to do some deeper testing, genetic testing. Right. And we had to get a diagnosis. Well, once I got this diagnosis, that's great. And I had a nice wave of relief come mm. over me. Yeah, at least you knew. Time, I, yeah, right. And that was comforting. But I also mm. had a wave of overwhelm because mm. if any of you are familiar with celiac or really any kind of autoimmune disorder, yeah. um, specifically celiac, it's not just about going gluten-free. It's no. really a lifestyle transformation yeah. and change. And not just on a physical level, right? Mm. It's not just about switching your food. You know, it affected me and impacted me on a uh, social level, mm. um, on a financial level, of course, right? Mm. And so there's a lot of layers to this. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And so let me see if I can kind of wind us back to where we were. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I we, we were talking about, about, you know, working in silos and making that yeah. bridge. Right. Uh, so here I had this doctor give me basically, you know, a diagnosis and two pieces of paper and have right. me walk out the door. And he was a functional medicine doctor. And I, I, I truly love this human being, you know, because we were able to get to the root cause. At yeah. the same time, I was thinking, well, this isn't enough. Mm. Because I'm here 
and I need to be here. There you uh, and, and I wish I had someone who I could have, who I wish I could have cloned myself, essentially, mm. <laughs> right? Someone who had some knowledge of nutrition, lifestyle behavior change, who could have cut my, um, my path in half. You know, it took, mm. it took a, a whole year to really learn all the nuances of gluten-free and, you know, how to not cross contaminate and all that. This is over, you know, 12 years ago. There's a ton of yeah. information out there. Correct. Um, you know, but it could have gotten to, gotten me a little bit farther, faster, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And, it was support. and there's no, I always like to say there's no I in wellness or well, in well-being there is an I, but there's no I in wellness, right? Mm. And it's wellness is really meant to be a team team sport. Yeah. We're not meant to do this. So that's kind of where this idea came from, where the coach can come in and really bridge that gap from where you are, um, you know, whether you've just gotten diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder or a chronic illness of different, you know, whatever it is, mm. or um, you've gotten your labs back, you've got high levels of X, Y, or Z, um, you know, and you want to work towards an 80% of these issues, chronic illness can be um, supported with lifestyle behavior changes. Yeah. You know, so if I understand this correctly, sorry to interrupt you there, the help yeah. coaches, what is their role, exact role, say in your situation, if you wind the clock back and if you had yeah. the support of the health coaches, as you have an army of them today, uh, how would that <laughs> have been different? You know, just so, so that we know <clears throat> that it gives perspective to somebody who actually has a problem and who understands where a health coach will fit in. I think there is a lot of areas where it could have been different. I think one of the areas that springs to mind is that it really could have upped my inner confidence of mm. dealing with my own illness and disease. Yeah. For someone who's not necessarily, you know, the doctor already said, go gluten-free, you know, but for someone to really walk with me shoulder to shoulder mm. side by side take me into a grocery store work with me in my kitchen i mean wow. i have some skills already right or go yeah. through my pants and really support me on developing the skills and the tools not just telling me what to do mm. but really me and supporting Showing me, me how to do it yeah so that, so that i can go and actually live my life and feel confident about this right even having someone work me on the mental emotional side of things mm. to use my voice and speak up for and advocate for myself whether i yeah. was going to talk to the doctor or whether i was ordering food at a restaurant mm. right and saying i need a gluten-free menu or can i please speak with the chef as easy as, as that might sound coming That's off of true. my lawn, it actually can be really almost debilitating for people uh, no. to stand up and use their voice and, and ask for what they truly need yeah so so a health coach is truly someone who educates, supports, provides advocacy. Um, and I think they're really that cheerleader, you know, mm. as well. So Yeah, because this is what I often observe as well, that, you know, people who want to go on this journey, and I'm talking more from an Australian perspective, is that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they've been diagnosed with a new condition, a chronic health condition. They go to see their doctors and the we have GPs or primary care providers as you have in America. But then after that, everything becomes very fragmented and piecemeal. You know, they can go and seek out their own naturopaths or health coaches or chiropractors or whatever it may be that they mm -hmm. that they want to access. Whereas what I'm hearing, a health coach is someone who ties all of this together like a necklace, yeah. you know, uh, the thread which is taking all those pearls together. <clears throat> Am I right in, in saying that? Because a lot of this is not only challenging when you're doing a piecemeal approach, that's what we call it in medicine, like, you know, small pieces, you're collecting them yourself. It can be expensive too, actually. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's a beautiful um, picture, you know, whether it's a necklace or like a, I almost think sometimes of like a, a spoke, you know, all the spokes yeah. on the wheel, something, but they are like the glue that is connecting all the pieces together and yeah. really supporting that client in their own, um, you know, wherever that client is showing up, wherever their readiness to change is, um, however important it is. You know, for example, you might have someone who is saying, you know, I, I really want to change my food and what I'm mm. eating. I want to get rid of all the processed foods, right? And a health coach 
who's taking a functional medicine approach to coaching mm -hmm. is going to, you know, create a nice safe space and ask some open ended questions and really try to understand the inner motivations. You know, tell mm. me a little bit about what created this uh, need or want or desire within you. You know, where mm. did this come from? What's, what's important for you about this? Why is this going to have meaning and purpose in your life? Mm. Right. So, and then uh, really breaking down and co-creating goals together that mm. are structured, but it's the key and the trick is, and this might seem a little counterintuitive is that the coach is really just kind of almost providing this space and this vessel mm. and the client, they're kind of taking a, a back seat mm. and the client actually it's really cool when the, when you can see this happen mm -hmm. is that the client starts to take a step forward and own their own health and well-being wow. and make choices and decisions mm -hmm. that are aligned with their goals their values and where they want to go mm -hmm. so i hope that kind of paints yeah. a picture powerful um it's very powerful when you can be in that yeah, space yeah and i think I, I loved it how you said that they provide uh, a space a safe space because actually intuitively people mm -hmm. know what's wrong with them and what they are doing wrong to hurt themselves mm -hmm. time and time again like when people come to me for a medical or a surgical issue i ask them so tell me what's going on and why do you think this is going on you know like that's the same why and they say oh i engage in emotional eating and i do this and that you know there, there is always you can read between the lines and the answer is there they just need a safe place to be able to express all of that very true yeah i think yeah. you know and this is my personal thoughts on this you know, I think in the world that we live in today, there is a lot of shame and blame, mm. you know, that get put on the patients or the clients yeah. or, you know, the woods, the woods, the coulds, whereas that's not really the, I'll say, um, you know, healthiest space to create, to, to create behavior change. Mm. Whereas when we create this non-judgmental space where they can really step in and kind of we we can just be almost like a reflection to yeah, them yeah no Do that and then they start to want to make the change and that's where the power is if they yeah. want to do it. correct so correct. and i think just to add to that social media doesn't help in creating oh. <laughs> that feeling of you know tension that when wow. you compare yourself to others you always feel worse uh, and yeah. you know yeah. i always Social media almost like robs you of uh, your happiness, I think, once <laughs> so. And I hear this time and time again from, once again, mm -hmm. my clients and patients and all of that. And I have to educate them to get off the social media because it is so addicting, you know, it just sucks you in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Turn Great. down the external noise for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at least just one final question on the health and wellness side of things is where do you see is the future of uh, you know, medicine going? And I ask medicine in a very broad way. Where do you sure. see in your, what's your like, uh, you know, vision in, in the, you know, as a founder of the Functional Medicine Coaching Institute, where do you see all of this is going? Yeah, so I think two things. One is I see functional medicine becoming medicine. That's just yeah. how we're going to be practicing medicine and i get that that's a hefty lift yeah. um especially around the mindset piece for <laughs> a oh. lot of people to start to engage yeah. in but i think we're starting to see people really want to understand the why they're hungry for more information and to make some of these shifts and changes in their life and th if that's what people want mm. um you know we have to make some some changes on on the flip side so yeah. i think that's not one. Number two, my personal vision is really to see that there are millions of functional medicine certified health coaches. I truly want to see a world where every single person has access to a health coach, just like most people have access to one mm. of these things. Yeah. You know, because what I have personally seen and found to be transformational is the power of the present moment. Oh. Can I share a quick story? Please, please, absolutely really quick story. When I was sure. seeing clients one-on-one, um, -on -one, uh, I would allow them access to me 
I mean, within within boundaries, right? Mm. But basically throughout the day, they could text me um, if they want, had a quick question or whatever. Well, one time I had this guy who I was working with and he texted me and I was able to look at my phone and he said, Elise, you got to help me out. I'm literally at the corner where I can make a right or a left turn. Mm. And to the right of me is McDonald's and to the left of me is uh, a grocery store. Right. What should I do? Right. Oh, and I so even though my training is, um, in psychology and, and nutrition, hmm. I actually am not a fan of telling people what to do or giving yeah. advice. Yeah. I am really a fan of allowing them to choose because I think it builds yeah. inner confidence and self-efficacy. Hmm. So I wrote back to him and I gave him, I said, here's my question to you. How do you want to feel in 20 minutes? Hmm. How do you want to feel? And I said, you decide. And we have, we had a really good rapport, mm -hmm. you know, and I worked with him. I said, whatever you choose, it'll be fast food, right? Mm. And I'm very careful not to put any shame or, or judgment around the food that people eat. Because mm. again, that's, that's not helpful in, no. in overall decision -making. No, exactly. And so I let him decide and mm -hmm. also, you know, ask him that question so he could bounce that off of his inner value system that we mm. had worked together. Right. And of course, he, he had redefined some of his health values as wanting more energy mm. and just wanting to feel, you know, better, whatever that meant to him. Mm. And so within 20 minutes, I got a photo back and it was a photo of him. Obviously, he chose to go to the grocery store. Grocery he picked store. up some walnuts and some blueberries. Wow. Both fast food, right? Yeah. But again, the choice was, it was the power of the present moment. If I yeah. could give everyone that opportunity to be able to, you know, just mm. have that in their corner, you know, to, to help them get along a little bit quicker, easier, faster, you know, yeah. I would love to see, would love it. Yeah. So. And you, you empowered the individual uh, by asking them, you know, what, uh, what do they want to feel like in 20 minutes? Wow. Like, I mean, you could have easily said, Hey, don't go to the Maccas, you know, you got to go to the grocery store, but that is you making a decision for them. Right. That is disempowering yeah. in many ways. Yeah. And how is that really helping them in the long yeah. run? Yeah. yeah. And I loved how you said also the, the first point, at least that, you know, change is eventually going to come. And I often refer back, historically speaking, you know, it took 1,100 scientific studies to actually prove that smoking is injurious to your health. 1,100 scientific studies. And I'm talking about the last, let's call it 80, 90 years, you know. Like, I mean, it was considered to be a norm to smoke. I remember my professors in surgery, they had photos of themselves with white aprons and a cigar, cigar in their hands, you know, like it was considered to be a social standard. Totally. So uh, I think we live in an age where information is exchanging very fast now. The world is much smaller. So hopefully it won't take 1,100 scientific studies to prove that functional medicine has indeed got a place. I think there is a level of social acceptance already, you know. And yes, mm -hmm. there are mainstream practitioners and universities who still don't believe in it and, you know, kind of blame and shame and all that sort of thing. But I think eventually the market is going to decide it, right? That's how I look at it. Yeah, People are absolutely. already so awakened, you know. Great. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit, Elise. I want to just uh, ask you a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey because I know besides being a well-being and a wellness coach and a person who sort of, you know, has gone through their own health issues, which was probably the inspiration that got you on this journey. Tell us... Mm -hmm. I believe that wealth and health have got a very intimate relationship. You know, people say, oh, no, I just want to be happy and money is the root of all evils and all that sort of thing, you know. But I, I feel studies after studies have shown you need a certain level of wealth mm -hmm. to allow yourself to lead a healthy life with a reasonable life expectancy. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about where do you see things as an entrepreneur and I would love to uh, tap into a little bit of your entrepreneurial experience, how mm -hmm. people can use health to actually create wealth, not as a financial planner or a strategist, but in a, in a big picture way. 
it brings me to this quote, and I don't know who said it, but it's something to the effect of people will give up their entire life's, you know, wealth for one day of good health. Mm. And it kind of intertwines the whole point about like social media and all these external forces that are constantly shoved on us, whether we like it or not, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Telling us who to be, how to be, where to be, how much money to have, what kind of, what to dress, what kind of car to drive, all these things. And, you know, again, we live in this world that's like constantly pushing this idea of work, 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 make money, status, you know, that's what's important, Mm. right? So it's other people's values that are being pressed upon us. And I think personally, as a society, we have not, most people are walking around, they don't even know their own value systems. Hmm. I were to say, what are your values? What do you value in life? You know, you might come up with a couple, uh, you know, off the top, like family or work or Hmm. exercise or something like that. Um, But when we really kind of zoom out and identify like, okay, you know, what are your values? Are you, how are you living your values? Cause I mm. truly believe your values. We oftentimes, you know, we look at, um, we look at behavior changes. We look at metrics, right. As being kind of a, this is the, the output, yes. but what comes before that. And a lot of the output, the values, the metrics, these are a lot of these things we can see, right. We can yeah. stand on a scale, a scale and see the measurement. I'm sure there's a lot of measurements as a provider you yes. take. Um, and if we were to go in my mind, Mm. a root cause approach, right. To feelings and emotions and beliefs and and all of that, you've got your habits and your behavior, which are your outcomes. But what precedes that are typically your feelings, Mm. needs, right. We typically act from an emotional space sometimes mental, emotional, you know, intellectual space. What precedes that are our thoughts. Our thoughts Correct. create our feelings. Mm. What precedes our thoughts are our belief systems. And that's oftentimes the extent of where we go. Mm. But when we really look at it, what what's creating our belief systems? Well, typically it's, it's our, our values. Values, yeah. But how many people are really actually aware, number one, of their values, and number yeah. two, are taking ownership of these are the values you know, I, these are the values I want to keep. Those are passed down to me. Those aren't really serving me mm. and be creating values that are going to truly serve them. And so, yeah, I don't even know if I'm answering your question here, but <laughs> no, no, it's all relevant. It's all relevant. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. So tell me again what the question was. If yeah. So the one. question was about the role of wealth. So wealth in mm. creating health your journey on being deciding starting from a clinical practice space now going into an entrepreneurial space what was the driver for that and where do you see that progressing that's really where i'm curious well it all ties in honestly because where i see this is my personal definition of it is you know wealth is really I think everyone's going to have their own definition of wealth. Everyone's going to have their own definition of health. I mean, of course, you can go look that up in the dictionary and there will be a definition there. But what was the real driving force for me was my personal transformation that actually it wasn't the celiac disease diagnosis. It was actually when I was 13 years old. So 10 years prior to that, Mm. I had, I was taunted as obese Elise in middle school. Right. I was over 50 pounds and uh, overweight, 50 pounds, and I never felt good. And mm. I went to my mom and I said, I want to change. I want to feel different. I want to look different. Why do I look this way? I was very curious. I met with a holistic nutritionist. We 180 my entire eating lifestyle, never calorie counted, didn't do any weigh-ins or anything like that. And it wasn't based on deprivation. It was based on nourishment and how do yeah. you feel in your body? Mm. And within two months, I lost 50 pounds. My wow. hair started to grow, my skin cleared up. And so that's where I realized, oh my gosh, um, you know, food is medicine, number one, and mm. your health or wealth. And I wanted to share this concept and this idea with everyone who would listen to me. I was only 13 years old, but that's really what set me on my trajectory. Yeah. So for me, 
you know, going from a solo practitioner to deciding, no, I want to share this a little bit more mm. has really, it's been fueled by a passion Yeah, to want to share this information, you know, and yeah. I strongly believe in following your passions and your desires and doing what does make you happy and fulfilled, being on your purpose, right? And the wealth, as far as like the money aspect that will come, you know, yeah. the success will come. It's what's, you know, being true, you know, to you. Yeah, Valley. and I and and I think what I'm hearing is that when you took that passion from your own journey and put it to serving other people, the money piece took care of itself or takes care of itself because you're adding value to someone's life and you're solving you someone else's problem. Yeah, perfect. You did. Yes, you so, summarized that. Beautiful. No, Thank absolutely. You. <laughs> you know, no, that's great, Elise. Uh, I know I'm very mindful of your time, but I think I was just curious to hear that part. There's always a story behind a story, right? Uh, I've always yeah. noticed that there's always a story behind a story. And thank you for sharing that personal story because it's very empowering for anybody who may be listening to this. Now, I'm mindful of time and I want to ask you these three questions that I always do to all my guests who come on the podcast. Uh, and the questions are insightful, but I've always noticed the answers just come beautifully in the moment, you know, uh, which I think we are. So uh, the first question I have for you, Elise, is what is your one most successful habit that has brought you to where you are today? Just the one habit, if we were to pen down from all the multiple habits you might have. I think the one successful habit that I've had is uh, honestly listening to my inner self hmm. listen to the inner self and that is a habit i think in and of itself to create the discipline to turn down all the outside noise and listen to what's what our inner wisdom is actually really trying to communicate to us yeah it's a hard thing to do right it's a hard mm -hmm. thing to listen because we all are totally. in self-doubt right and yeah, that's what I society teaches us yeah uh, absolutely all right. Question number two is, what are your three truths of wisdom that you would want to share with your loved ones? Hypothetically speaking, if all your work was taken away, you know, whatever books, lectures, audios, videos you may have made, just hypothetically speaking, let's see if that was taken away. What would, how would you condense it to those three truths? Okay. Ready? Number one, I would say whatever you can hold in your mind, you can hold in your hands. Beautiful. So imagination is super powerful. Number two, I would say trust your gut. Trust your inner wisdom, a million percent. Um, and number three, I would say follow your own unique path mm. and don't uh, you know, allow other people to sway you. Follow what's true for you. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, you said trust your gut, you know, and I, as a GI surgeon myself, you know, I, I kind of often joke with my patients, you know, I've actually seen the gut, you know, and it's so powerful. Yeah. It's your second brain. Yes. So. Yep, so we'll, oh gosh, I'd, love I'd love to yeah be a fly on the wall or oh gosh that would be amazing to see that <laughs> and the final question is uh, Elise what do you see as your legacy you know how do you how do you, you've got a lot of work to do I know but I I feel that you know we all uh, want to think of that bigger picture what are you looking forward to uh, as your like you know key work wow that's a great question. I think the um, answer that's probably springing to mind or bubbling to the surface is to leave the world a little bit better than when I originally came into it and to hopefully be a role model um, and someone who inspires others to truly just own their health and lead from within, lead themselves first. Yeah. That's so powerful, you know, like to find the world a better place than how we found it when we sort of, you know, uh, that, that that's immensely powerful because I was reading a study that actually said that this is the first time in the history of mankind that the current generation has got a shorter lifespan than its predecessor because mm -hmm. of how we have created all these new issues, global warming included, uh, in yeah. our own generation of consuming things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we have the power to change that a million percent. We the do. power is within, within us. So yeah. yeah, I've got Gandhi sitting on my wall over there. And so uh, I'm constantly hearing, you know, be the change yeah. that you want to, you know, see in the world. So uh, that's so powerful. Elise, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It was a delight speaking to you. Yeah. And uh, obviously, I learned a lot. Uh, and I'm sure anybody listening to this conversation would uh, uh, learn a lot. Tell us before we say goodbye, mm -hmm. where can people find your work and where can people go to to get your books, yeah. please? Oh, gosh, yeah. So please come and connect with me. I love connecting with new people. You can find me on LinkedIn at Elise Wagner or Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. You can find me on Instagram as well. It's Elise underscore Wagner or at Functional Med Coach. Um, you can come over to our website. We have a ton of really great resources. It's functionalmedicinecoaching.org. And um, I would love to, yeah. And for the books, you can go to Amazon and find yeah. those. And and we will we will put the notes uh, in the show notes uh, of this podcast so that you know people can find that conveniently. Elise, yes. thank you so much for your time. It was a lovely conversation, and we hope to be in touch. Absolutely, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Take care. <laughs>